Okay, in this video, I'm um, just showing the sinusoid that we were making. We're using Spider and Python. Um, if you want to learn Python, then it's better you use the syntax where you show that you are actually using something from within a package so you know where things come from. But if you just want to plot, and most of the stuff you're going to do is just plot. Uh, it's perfectly okay to just import everything. So you say from numpy I import everything, from matplotlib pyplot I import everything. And there should be enough to do most mathematical things, uh, that basic stuff that we'll start with. And you should also be able to plot. So I I want to have a very clean looking waveform. I mean, uh, we are only getting everything in discrete time. So it's if we don't get enough points, it's going to look like uh, it's stepped or not so clean so um, so I'm just getting a, l a hell of a lot of points so I've decided I'm going to get a hundred thousand points that's the advantage of using the computer I can't do that by hand and I'm going to do that over some period which I've decided is 100 milliseconds so that means each each point is 100 milliseconds divided by the number of points I want which is one microsecond so that's what I've got here I've got from one to a hundred thousand with steps of one so a range so that's what a range is um, and uh, it has a start it has a stop and it has a step which is what we've given it now these are actually integers but once you multiply it with a microsecond so micro is 1 into 10 power minus 6 that is 1 divided by a million um, then it becomes a floating point number so now I have a time axis. I can plot the time axis also, which I have not done here. So let's just do that. Plot t, just to know what is t. So I plot it. I get a waveform. There it is. Um, all it's saying is that it has a hundred thousand points. Since I haven't given any x-axis, it just takes the points, and its points go up to a hundred thousand. On the y-axis is the actual value of t, which is only going to 0 0.1, because 0 0.1 is 100 milliseconds. So this is this is actually the time, 100 milliseconds. 0 0.1 is 100 0 0 milliseconds. Okay, so I don't actually want to do this now. If I um, want to take a sinusoid of it, I just need to say sin of time. So sine of 2 pi ft would give me a waveform that is a sinusoid of it. So I want uh, to do it for a frequency of 10 hertz because 10 hertz is 0 0.1 seconds, 1 by 0 0.1 seconds, and that is 100 milliseconds. So I'll get one full clean period of it. So, and if I, of course, increase the frequency, I'll get more periods. So this is all I've done here, sine 1. I'm just calling it sine 1 because it's one waveform is 2 into sine 2 pi into f into t that's it oh for now i'm just going to do just a sinusoid okay so this is sine 1 and then i can plot sine 1 so let's do that so it's done oh, and oh. whoa da. Mm, yeah, I just run it again and then I get a sinusoid that is going 100,000 points. Its amplitude is 1 because sine goes a maximum value of 1. And then it goes to 0, then it goes to minus 1, then it comes back. Okay, so that's what I'm getting here. And so if I plot sine into sine. I wanted to get a sine square in because I wanted to calculate the power in the sinusoid and so that one actually looks like a very small smooth waveform. It the sinusoid had an average of zero. So in fact let's go back and let's let's look at the sinusoid. So I had a sinusoid. So I wanted to if I wanted to integrate it and if I don't take an average I have to integrate it and I have to divide it by the total number of points that are there uh, the total time that you have done integrated it for so here um, 
the waveform has a hundred thousand points so my x-axis is sort of points no? I want to average it uh, and my y-axis are different values so I want some way to actually just sum all of them so well what would be a way to do that so um, the one advantage of doing this is we could have seen what are the different kinds of functions that it has so let's find out what are the functions it has to do this for me so if one and p add no sum average mean yeah it does have a mean so I can take a mean of sine 1 which means it should just add everything and average it so let's do that so it gives me a really really small number it's 10 power minus 18 that means it's almost close to 0 yeah okay good so and if I do the same for sine square it tells me that it's very close to 0.5 we are not taking an exact waveform because we are approximating a waveform by taking a few points of it, right? So now, of course, it's not a few points, it's a lot of points, but yet there is going to be mathematical error and accuracy and so on and so forth. So, uh, yeah, so this is, where, this is what I'm getting. I know that the average value of a sine square, which is basically my power, sine square is my instantaneous power, the average of that is the average power that I expect and this is what instruments measure so this looks like a nice smooth waveform and its average value is 0.5 which is why the power of a, of a sine square is 0.5 so that's all I say here but the sine square is not an abrupt waveform like the rectified waveform there is a function called abs which takes the absolute value so if I say abs of Five. That means five, and I say abs of minus five. It gives me five. So, for smaller values within which you are doing abs of minus zero point one, it basically makes it point one. So that's what I'm doing here. I'm taking a, a sine one, which is abs of sine one, and if I plot that in black, then it follows the waveform till it goes to the till it's positive, and when it's negative, it flips it around the two waveforms are not the same okay and now I'll show you a more dramatic way of seeing that the two waveforms are not the same so it's it, you should not confuse the sine square just because it's come up to assume that it looks like a sine actually this signal is every time I go through one period this signal has gone through two periods so this is actually at twice the frequency of a sinusoid and it's smooth throughout it's not abrupt like your absolute value is so I, I'm just going to exaggerate that fact by taking a sinusoid that was not of amplitude 1. If I had a sinusoid of amplitude 2 and I did the same thing, F9 just runs the code. And then I see that since the amplitude was 2, 2 square is 4, so I see a, a cosines of of amplitude 2 which is which is basically got the average value of 2 so that will be my average power and of course the absolute value would not have not have changed it will be the same uh, same amplitude as this so we are not talking about the same thing and uh, I just want to make sure you don't get confused about it so this is sort of a template for what it is for uh, how do you create time axis and how do you create one waveform so what I would like you to do is to see if you can add a few more waveforms so the average value I mean after you square it and then you average it if it is varying you average it it should still uh, not exceed one 